This clip just covers key differences between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. In the Unit 4 course, we have to cover stress and in particular the fight-flight response. So I'll go into more detail when I get there later in the year. The key function of the sympathetic nervous system is the activation of the fight-flight response, which deals with unexpected changes in our environment, specifically threats. It achieves this by speeding up the body, thus our, we become more alert, the body tenses up, and we're able to maximise our chances for survival in a threatening situation. The hypothalamus processes that we're under threat. The sympathetic nervous system is activated, which in turn results in the adrenal medulla, which is just on top of the kidneys, releasing the stress hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline, into the bloodstream, thus enabling our physiological systems to maximise their responsiveness in order for us to deal with that threat successfully. So heart rate, blood pressure, our breathing rate all increase, sugar and fats are released from storage to provide instant energy for the muscles, enabling a rapid response. Other responses that aren't vital for our survival are shut down or put on hold, such as digestion and urine production. Some of the key physiological changes that will be initiated by the sympathetic nervous system when we're under threat include the heart rate increasing, lungs increasing the respiration rate so that our blood will be oxygenated more readily, our blood pressure will increase so we'll be more responsive to a threat, our muscles will become tense so that we're prepared to either fight or flight, sweating will increase so that we keep the body cool and we're also more slippery, that is harder to grab if we're being chased let's say, our blood vessels in our skin will constrict our blood will become sticky if we suffer any surface cuts, which will reduce blood loss. Pupils will dilate so that more light can enter the eye and we can see our threat, threats more clearly. But other functions that are not essential for survival will shut down or decrease. So salivation, bowel movements, urine production, these aren't essential for survival so that they're shut down so that our resources can be maximised elsewhere, thus maximising our chances for your survival in a threatening situation. So once we've successfully dealt with a threat, the parasympathetic nervous system will counteract the effects initiated by the sympathetic nervous system when we were under threat. So for instance, the pupils will constrict to minimise the amount of UV entering our eyes. Salivation will be stimulated so we can start digesting our breakfast, our heart rate, will be reduced to an optimal level. Our stress hormones will be reduced, adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol, to an optimal level, etc. And it's your parasympathetic nervous system that maintains an optimal level of functioning during low stress times. The key distinction between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system is the sympathetic nervous system responds almost instantly to a threat. So once the hypothalamus is processed that we're under threat, it's a quick chain reaction in terms of our adrenal gland releasing that adrenaline and noradrenaline into our bloodstream, sugar and fats being released so we've got instant energy, heart rate will go up, the respiratory system, etc. The parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, takes a while to return us back to that homeostatic level, that optimal level of functioning. So stress hormones, they tend to linger in the bloodstream. It takes a while for the body to use them up. A good example of this is if you've ever done some, if you've ever exerted yourself, let's say you've done a, a run in the house athletics and you do a hard 400 meters and you've got that lactic acid feeling that you have for several hours, you're a bit sore and tired in the muscles, etc. So it's your parasympathetic nervous system taking a while to get your body fully recovered from that exertion.